Hello and welcome to Newswatch 16 at 530. I'm Lisa Washington and I'm Kurt Aaron. Today marks 50 years since Hurricane Agnes, the disaster that changed lives and our landscape. Yeah, I'll tell you, 50 years later, we spoke to experts about what changed and why Agnes caused so much destruction that it did. I didn't switch jobs. Imagine oh, for a moment say. a flood where the water was so powerful it caused cemeteries to give up their dead. Hundreds of corpses moving into unsuspected neighborhoods where people had no idea the dead were returning. It would be like a scene from a horror movie. Unfortunately, this wasn't a movie. It was a tragic reality for some Pennsylvanians living along the Susquehanna River in the summer of 1972. Hurricane Agnes, AKA the big one. It intensified over the Gulf of Mexico in mid-June 1972. After making landfall across the Southeast US, it began moving out to sea on the 21st before suddenly changing course and heading for our region on the 22nd. It settled over Pennsylvania and upstate New York and New Jersey on the 23rd as a tropical storm. Agnes is remembered as one of the wettest tropical cyclones on record for Pennsylvania because parts of our region received up to 18 inches of rain. This caused flooding at a scale never seen before. Even the president at the time, Richard Nixon, came to see the carnage. This is the big one. It completely changed the landscape physically. It literally changed the way certain areas were. It changed the look of them. Thanks to Agnes, sections of the Wyoming Valley in the Wilkesbury area were washed away. But it wasn't just here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Our state capital, Harrisburg, places like Shypok, where residents were living on the lowest floodplain in the entire city. That section was completely destroyed. The Cameron Street corridor was inundated with water thanks to Agnes and the Paxton Creek. Also, northern Harrisburg, where this, the governor's mansion, they were not spared. But the northern branch of the Susquehanna River in Wilkesbury was particularly brutal. My dad and I usually said we rode down to uh, Corner of Denison and Wyoming Avenue and saw all the caskets floating down. Can you imagine having to wade through flood water containing hundreds of corpses? Can't imagine that at all. Definitely not. And Kurt, of course, is with us here at the anchor desk because uh, this is the 50 year anniversary of that devastating storm. And every time I see those pictures, it's just hard to even fathom all of that damage and destruction, not to mention the lives lost. But Kurt, something we haven't even touched on the financial cost of all of this. Absolutely. You know, we talk about in terms how much Agnes cost us back in 72. Right. It was $2 billion. Now, people always ask me, well, equate that in today's money. It's just under $14 billion when adjusted for inflation. Wow. Now, I want you to think about this, and this is what I was talking with our producer Zoe about. You know, you always hear our politicians, Lisa, talk about 20 billion here, 10 billion here. Right. How much really is 1 billion? Okay, so let's look at it in terms of time. So if we look at it in terms of time, if you took away 1 billion seconds, say we had this time warp. Okay. What year would we be in? For a bill going back a billion a seconds? A billion seconds, not minutes, not hours, not anything. Jeez, Just think I don't of the, know. the magnitude. We'd be back to 1990, and George Bush Sr. just was uh, announced president. So, wow. if we do just minutes, and again, this is just to show you the scope of how much one billion means. If we went back one billion minutes in time, that's 1,901.32 years ago. So, just several hundred years after Christ was on the earth. So we're talking all of these $14 billion in damage. Right. That's tremendous. And you can see the footage right there, not to mention the bodies and everything else that we talked about in that package. I mean, think about that. You're downstream from where the dikes break, uh, the flood walls, and then you end up with this swirl around the 44th Cemetery and other cemeteries, and people volunteer to go into the waters and retrieve these human remains. I mean, it just, it, it's unbelievable to think about. And it just shows you the humanity and, and, you know, the kindness, the generosity of the people here. This was the time when neighbors had to help each other. You know, the people were, you know, all you have is your neighbor and whoever's available to assist you. Certainly, um, certainly a devastating storm and the impact still felt 50 years later.